First Kings chapter 15. Now in the 80, 18th year of King Jeroboam, that's north, Israel, the son of Nebat came, reigned Abijam over Judah. Abijam is Rehoboam's son. Rehoboam's died. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. That's a short time. Three years. And his mother's name was Micah, the daughter of Abisham. And he walked in all the sins of his father, Rehoboam, which Rehoboam got from his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake, God made an oath to David, the word of God. Did the Lord his God give him a lamp, light, in Jerusalem? To set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. The only after Solomon and Rehoboam, the sins of these nations, the only thing that's helping Judah is the oath that God made to David. And the only thing that's helping Jacob and the twelve tribes and Saul, King Saul and David and, and uh, is the oath that God made to Abraham. This nation, man, they've just been angering God through the 40 years of the wilderness. And God said, you know, because of Abraham, because of Isaac, because of Jacob, and now the kings. And it wasn't for what I said to David. Man, the sin is growing. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now, as far as Uriah, the murder, and the charge of adultery. Everything else David was, was clean. Everything else David did was right. David had that pure heart before the Lord, a pure repentance of his sins. Some people would think, you know, David being held just because of the adultery and the murder. No, mercy of God. Which really rarely didn't happen in the Old Testament. Look at look at uh, Joab. He goes runs to the altar. He committed two two murders. Three, if you count Absalom, he was ordered by David not to kill him, but was in battle. And Solomon then he says, "Listen, uh, uh, Abner and the other one there, you definitely murdered him." There was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. That's the civil war. It's still carrying on. Now the rest of the acts of Abijah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? We're going to go over there in a moment. And they are. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. That war is just continuing on. And Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. Now let's carry over to 2 Chronicles 13. Study. And God put it here, there, and everywhere so you would study. You find new information. You can't just... see. You know the danger of these... Oh, I got this scripture on my wall. I got the scripture here in my car. I got the scripture. I got my favorite. What's that scripture say with the other scriptures? You know, people say, uh, what's that one in Philippians? I will supply all your needs. But the context is, if you help Christians in need, then God will see your needs. You got to be careful. Now, in 2 Chronicles 13, verse 1. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, began Abijah to reign over Judah. And he reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriah of Gibeah. Now you're going to run back over 1 Kings 15 and say, well, that's not the same name. Maybe one's a mother and one's a father. Could be a grandparent. Nothing big deal. I'm not even going to stress my time with it. I'm just going to tell you, 15 and 13, the chapters here, it's not the same name. Three other reasons. And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. The civil war again. Abijah set the battle in array with all with an army of valiant men of war. 
even 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle array against him with 800,000 chosen men, being men, mighty men of valor. So we didn't get this in Kings. This is extra information. And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zimram, which is Mount Ephraim. See, there are names in the Bible that have other names, plain and simple. And said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam, and all Israel. Now he's got to have a loud voice. Because he's preaching to a city and army on a mountain. Street preaching. Here it is. May not be a street, but he's on top of a mountain. He said, Oh, Jeroboam, you Israelites, I got a message for you. People come up to me, You're too loud. Isn't that what the Bible would do? You haven't read your Bible. I don't think a Bible said, Jeroboam, armies of Israel, will you listen to me? I doubt it. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel, now look at that, opens up his message about God. I do every time. For God so loved the world. Second word is God. Gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever. Now look at that. That's the sure mercy of David. Now remember, we read in Kings that this king is not right, but the Bible says he wasn't perfect. He had some sins of his father. But he knows where his family lies. His family lies and Israel lies upon David and that throne. Even to him and to his sons by a covenant of Saul. Yet, Jeroboam the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon. So he's not a son. He's not in the family. The Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and has rebelled against his Lord. God had that happen. And he didn't rise up. All Israel said, hey, we need relief. You ain't going to get it. Okay, bye. <laughs> Plain and simple. It was Rehoboam that gathered the army. It was going to go fight. And God sent the, the prophet. You better go home. Because what what I get to Jeroboam. Rehob what Jeroboam has done, I allowed it. So go home. Don't fight. And they fought in civil wars. And there gathered unto him vain men. This is, would be Jeroboam. And children of Belial. That's wicked, perverse, gross. Americans today. And has strengthened him, themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. There's been wars. There's already been civil wars. When Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. I don't know. He's maybe bragging about his dad a little bit. But we're told there were civil wars. <laughs> well, yeah. So it, it's a little, you know, stand up for my dad. And now ye think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David? And Abijah set the battle on Ray. Uh, excuse me, who started this battle? You did, not Jeroboam. Jeroboam's only got his battle because you set up the battle. So, got a little lie here. And ye be a great multitude, and there are with you golden calves. Those those two calves, which God's against. Isn't it funny, with Aaron's calf that was gold, you would have three calves. Uh, I'm trying to say this right. How would I say? God to Satan. And Judas, the, 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 the fallen Messiah. And then the false prophet. The, tr the unholy trinity. As much as the holy trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Which Jeroboam made you for gods. Alright, he's right about that. You guys got calves. You guys got moves. You guys got the golden arches up there. Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron? Yes, they have. And the Levites, yes. And have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands? Oh, yes. So look what we did. Look what we learned from this with Abijah. Jeroboam is following 
Gentiles. A Jewish person, where well, he's Jewish, I believe it was Ephraim. And Abijah says, you are following the Gentiles. So when you've got a church state organization with priests that are not Jewish, not Levite, not of Aaron set up, you've got a religion of nations, Babylon the Great. And let's look at more. The manner of other lands, so that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself, anybody can be your priest. Sound familiar? With a young bullock and seven rams. All right, we learned something else about Jeroboam's religion. If you bring a bull and you bring some rams, you are able to be one of his priests. I guarantee that's probably costly. That's all it took. There was no birthright of the Levite family of Aaron. The same may be a priest of them that are no gods. All right, Abijah, go for it. Preach it. You got a religion, Jeroboam. We've got God. Preach it, brother. Sounds like me preaching on the street. You going to heaven by Jesus Christ or you going to by hell by whatever. Preach it. Preach it. Street preaching. He's calling out their sin. He's saying, hey, that what you're doing is sin and ain't going to get you by what i do but as for us the lord is our god look at that jeroboam don't have the lord jeroboam don't have god not with his own priests not with the golden calves remember aaron remember what god told moses about that whole thing and we have not forsaken him you have and the priests which minister unto the lord levites the son of aaron and the Levites wait on their business. Listen, Jeroboam. Listen, religionists. Nation religion. We had the God-approved, established setup that's not a religion that's going on here. When I preach today in the church age and I preach it, I have the established mode of God. Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ by salvation. The gospel. And nothing else added to it. If you got anything else, you don't have God. Plain and simple. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now we're in the New Testament. We are in the church age. Second Chronicles. Old Testament. This is not us. We don't have a major church system of priests. I am a priest. According to Revelation 1. I just don't call myself Father. God is my father. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and evening. Every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. That's according to the law. They, Judah, though they're sinning, they are still obeying the Lord. Now remember, Rehob uh, not, yeah, Rehoboam, he had gone the way of wickedness. God ca came in with Shishak and pff, it's mine, it's mine, taking it back. Boom. And then we leave Rehoboam. He's entering to the house of the Lord before he dies. When Before he dies, going in the house of the Lord, look what he's done. He set up the priests. The priests are still doing what they're supposed to be doing. When his son sets up camp, sets up, establishes his throne, the priests are in the temple. They've sinned. They repented. They got right. And they're back to what they're supposed to be doing. Now, with that thing, they're still sinning. But majority are back. The showbread also set they in order upon the pure table and the candlesticks of gold with lamps thereof to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the law, our God. But Lord, our God, but you have forsaken him. True. You ain't coming down. Now, remember when Jeroboam set up those calves. People are going to go down in Jerusalem. They're going to have a fallen heart. They're going to go. And, and he made his own religion. So they don't go to Israel. They don't go to Jerusalem. And behold, God himself is with us for our captain. And his priests with sounding trumpets, exactly what the law said, to cry alarm against you. 
Well, again, Abijah, you set up the battle. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to come, ar come about behind him. So they were so, so they were before Judah, and the ambushment, that's the only time that word shows up, ambushment was behind him. So while he's preaching, the enemies of God with their religion, sound familiar? A religion is surrounded by someone who's doing what God tells them to do and ready to kill. It's not the ones that are serving God are killing. It's the religion that's killing. And they've surrounded God's people while they were not paying attention. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. The battle. So Jeroboam's already started fighting. Though Abijah has brought the army, Jeroboam has started a fight while the preacher's preaching. And they cried unto the Lord, Judah. And the priest sounded with the trumpets, Judah. Then the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam. And all Israel before Abijah and Judah. God stepped in and said, I like that preaching. I like what you're saying. <clears throat> now that's not going to happen today. We don't live by the law. We, don't, we live by faith. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. A lot of people think, well, if you're right by God, the, the people that go oppose you, no lightning will fall from the sky and burn them up. No. That's not our age. We have a long-suffering God that's full of mercy and full of grace and giving you able opportunity by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, by people who preach the word. Look at Paul. He could have struck Paul down at any time, but Paul got saved and turned around and began preaching. Too many people look for the Old Testament ways of life in the church age. And even still, with fire coming down from the skies and God giving victory like he does, they still fall away. Many years, many, many years from now, when we get into Jeremiah and Ezekiel, we're going to find out that they've been in captivity because of their sins. They didn't get right. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. Now, how do you do that? If they... If they fled against Judah, that means they turned around and went the other way. They had the ambush, ambushment. And they fell into the hands of into Judah. The only way that could happen is the ones that came for the ambush. They're trying to get out of there, and all they do is that ambush ended up there in the hands of Judah. So that ambush that, that Jeroboam, that, that was a wrong plan. God says, okay, those men over there, boom, you just landed right in the hands of Judah. Thank you very much. It didn't work for him. And Abijah and his people, Judah, slew them with a great slaughter. Now, see, we don't do that as Christians. If God gives us a victory on the street, you know, if for us, if God turned off the, the music, we don't go in and start killing people. We just keep on preaching the word and wait for the next obstacle to come in with a great sword so they fell down slain of israel five hundred thousand chosen men that's some battle for a civil war and yet where was their anti-levite priests where was their calves well what did they do for their people they didn't do nothing their religion has dead people Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed because they relied upon the Lord, God of their fathers. So there you go. There's victory. My victory will come at the rapture, whether I die or I'm here when the rapture happens. Because I will go and be with the Lord and those that didn't do, they're left behind. And the victory will come after that when Jesus mounts up on his horse and we mount up on our horses behind him. All the enemies of God, we don't do the killing. We're an army, but God does it. That flame that comes out of his mouth, that sword, the word. 
And then God judges between the, the sheep nation and the goat nation. We're just there like, hi, here we are. And Abijah pursued after Jeroboam and took cities from him, Bethel. And that's where he set up the golden calves. But it will fall into the hands of wickedness again. That's the house of God. With towns thereof. And Jeshua with the towns thereof. And Ephraim with the towns thereof. So he's taking land. Away from Israel. Neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah. So he just got weaker and weaker. And the Lord struck him. And he died. So he's just a loser with the Lord. I bet you none of his prophets could come in and heal him. Or give him strength. Jeroboam today. I guarantee is in hell burning today, right now. And probably with his priest. And Abijah waxed mighty. That's completely opposite of Jeroboam. And married 14 wives. Well, that's not even a quarter of what Solomon had. And begat 20 and 2 sons. And 16 daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abijah. And his ways. And his sayings are written in the story of the prophet Ido. We don't have that book. Don't go looking for it. Where is it? I don't know. Is it in heaven? I don't know. What can you say about Ido? I don't know. Plain and simple. We have what we have, what the Holy Spirit wants us to have. And that's it. Lie to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. 